this morning. May the words of our mouths, the meditations of our hearts, and the actions of our lives be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our first lesson this morning comes from the 20th chapter of Exodus. And those of you who remember your Sunday school lessons uh, know that this is a reading of the Ten Commandments. It's not the only one in scripture, but it's one of them. <clears throat> Listen to the word and the law and the grace of God. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourselves an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on earth beneath or that is in the water underneath the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, or your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns for six days for in six days the lord made heaven and earth the sea and all that is in them but rested on the seventh day therefore the lord blessed the sabbath and consecrated it honor your father and mother so that your days may be long in the land that the lord your god is giving you you shall not murder you shall not commit adultery you shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against a neighbor. You shall not cover, covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Susan? Yes. Susan Harris called me and said she was having troubles connecting this morning, so... Thank she you. wanted me to pass that message on. We will look forward to Susan uh, sharing with us musically another time. Um, would you please message her back and let her know that um, we love that she was going to sing and um, appreciate her frustration. Another day. I like this particular piece of artwork. <clears throat> uh, I, I hope the reference to the tablets of the law and the Ten Commandments comes through and in the right half uh, image of the four Gospels. And our Gospel lesson this morning is from the second chapter of John. The Passover of the Jews was near and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables, making a whip of cords. He drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jewish leaders then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jewish leaders then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body after he was raised from the dead. His disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I 
I like that particular piece of artwork because of the ways it ties together the Testaments, the Old Testament and New Testament, the Hebrew and the Greek, the Jewish and the Christian, and helps us understand the way in which they are one whole story. That the Ten Commandments themselves, which come down the mountain to us on two tablets, are gift and grace, the same way that Jesus is gift and grace. And we hear the story of his life and ministry, his death and resurrection in four gospels. These are different stories that people of faith have told across eons that come down to us across generations. And they are gift and grace. Sometimes Christians have this bad habit of trying to contrast the old and the new. And I've heard um, Christians say things like, I like the God of the New Testament better than the God of the Old Testament because the Old Testament God is full of wrath and judgment and punishment. And the God in the New Testament is full of love and grace. Anyone who reads clearly, reads deeply, knows that is not true. It's not true for a couple of reasons. One, primarily, we believe there's only one God. There aren't separate gods. There's only one God and creator, redeemer, sustainer of all that is. Just one. But secondly, even when there are words like in Exodus about consequences to the third and fourth generation of people who reject God's ways, there's gift and grace to the thousandth generation when we love God. The reason Jesus spoke and preached about love and grace and forgiveness at all is because he was reading the Hebrew scriptures and preaching that word. And if you've ever looked around at um, the images that get uh, painted on walls of church nurseries, they are rarely New Testament stories. <laughs> Maybe Jesus' birth. But it is really hard to tell New Testament stories in kid-friendly ways. There are spaces, but not so many. Because, of course, there was a cost that came with Jesus' ministry, not just for him, but for his disciples as well. And this particular story out of the Gospel of John is one of those that's lifted up <clears throat> for um, a moment when Jesus was not gracious. And I think this, uh, this scene of Jesus turning over tables and driving out the money changers is one that challenges us especially if our image of Jesus is a sweetness and light, gift and grace. This is a moment when we see his anger. I can tell you that it's helpful for me in understanding that particular gospel lesson to understand the way things happened in the temple in the first century. In the Old Testament, the way worship was described, the way sacrifices were made, you had to bring certain kinds of gifts for sin offerings, for healing blessings. There were certain prices associated with different kind of blessings that you received in the temple. And so the money changers and the people selling the animals are people who were profiting off those who were seeking God. In order to come and worship, in order to come and make sacrifices, you had to buy what they were selling. Money changers were necessary because the Jewish people who were faithfully coming to the, the temple couldn't bring Roman coins. You know what was on the face of Roman coins, of course, right? The face of Caesar. The face of the emperor. Who claimed to be divine. So Roman coins violated the Ten Commandments. It violated the law against graven images. To carry them, to have them at all, 
let alone worship them or use them in worship, wasn't, wasn't possible. And so money changers would trade. And anyone who has ever traded money, all of our folks who have been to Cuba, when you're trying to figure out how many CUCs there are to the dollar and whether or not the, the exchange rate is fair, Anyone who's traveled anywhere else and you're, you're trying to figure out which exchange rate you want, it's entirely likely that the money changers in this story were price gouging. People who just wanted to worship, who just wanted to make their offering. And the idea that someone was putting a wall between faithful people and God was something that Jesus couldn't abide. So he said, tear down these walls, these immense, amazing, astonishing stone walls, tear them down, and I will raise them up in three days. If you, any of you have been to Jerusalem and seen the Western Wall, if any of you have studied images of that stone wall, it is astonishing. The size of the block, the precision with which they're cut and fitted, The idea that you could build anything like that in days would be astonishing. But of course, he wasn't talking about the temple. He was talking about himself. These are the texts that tell us that Jesus understood what was ahead. And what was ahead was gift and grace, but it was expensive gift and grace and one that he was willing to give us. Not just his death, but also his resurrection. God's law is not punishment. God's law is not set in contrast to grace. God's law is sweeter than honey, the psalmist says. These 10 rules about how we live with one another, how we build a society that is faithful, is sweet. And Jesus summarized them all with two, love God, love each other. Sweetness, gift, grace in the midst of life that is challenging and sometimes painful. But we go together again and again. This is the gift of God for the people of God. Amen.